Central Executive Council has approved the 2018 draft budget for annual transmission to the National Assembly. Minister of Budget and National Planning Udoma Udo Udoma made the disclosure at the end of the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting but did not disclose details of the fiscal document. Udoma said next year's budget preparation was completed as promised. A Minister of Budget and National Planning says Cantal is now working on the National Assembly to work out a date for presentation of the proposal by the President. Federal Executive Council today approved a draft 2018 budget proposals. So we'll be liaising with the National Assembly um, you know, to agree uh, the date in which the President will formally submit the budget to them. Udoma, however, declined comment on the content of the proposal, saying its figures would be made known by the President's joint presentation. The Minister of Finance, Kemi Adosh, also briefed journalists on government's plan to maintain roads across the country. And this uh, is a PPP initiative that will allow the private sector to get involved in road production or, uh, in exchange for tax credits. Um, what's unique about this scheme is that it's building on an existing scheme, an existing, existing scheme that avails uh, tax credit. Canto also approved 796 million naira for construction of 14 kilometer 330 kVA transformer plant for the transmission company of Nigeria in Azura, Edo State. On behalf of Transmission Company of Nigeria for the construction of a 14 kilometer 330 kV transmission line to get them ready to evacuate the Azura power plant in Edo State when it is ready in uh, May 2018. Cantor said government has so far released 450 billion naira for capital project from the 2017 budget. Well, moving on, Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo says Nigeria's unity can only be achieved through godly reconciliation of every dissenting group in the country. The Vice President gave the accession at the 8th National Prayer Breakfast held at the International Conference Center Abuja Thursday. He said, until citizens embrace God's own unity, togetherness will continue to elude the country. The prayer session was a convergence of notable Nigerians who came to lend their voices to the quest to prevail on God to forgive and bless the country. The purpose of this annual prayer breakfast is to come together with all citizens, not, not only of our country, but of also of other countries. After praise and worship were made, prayers were also made for the progress of every sector of the nation's economy. The Vice President maintained that unity will continue to be a mirage in the country if tribes or ethnic groups do not comprehend religious teachings. Reconciliation, God's power, and the new pathway to unity. Or to make it clearer, the theme is the new pathway to national unity is by reconciliation through the power of God. Now quoting from the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verses 3 and 13, the speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, also emphasized the need to keep the unity and the bond of peace. This was corroborated by those who attended the special session. Verse number 3 and 13, and uh, it reads, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Well, one thing is very clear from the message today, that the issue of reconciliation is something that we have to connect with God. That it doesn't, it's not something that comes just from the man and from contrarian spirit that we have had today. It's important that all leaders come together for prayer like this. Uh, it's important that even in the next phase, this prayer should include not only legislators, but judges and the executive should be a combined prayer fellowship. In other news now, we'll move on straight now to the National Assembly, where the Senate has threatened to sanction government parastatos and agencies that are yet to submit their annual report and audited account to the Auditor General of the Federation. 
The position of the Senate on the issue was made known by its Public Accounts Committee when it addressed Senate correspondent at the National Assembly Complex. This committee will ensure that all the participants comply with constitutional provision of submission of the annual reports and audited accounts to the Office of, of Auditor General for the Federation promptly. The Senate Public Account Committee disclosed that based on information from the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation, the problem of the non-submission of audited report and annual account is widespread. Gentlemen of the press, the information from the Office of the General for the Federation shows that all federal government statutory corporations, commissions, authorities, agencies are not up to date with the submission of their annual reports. The committee also disclosed that the last report submitted by the Auditor General was for the year 2015, noting that the submission of the report for 2016 is already overdue and it therefore urged the Auditor General to act appropriately. From the Senate straight now to the lower chambers where the House of Representatives has urged the National Identity Management Commission, NIMC, to harmonize the biometric data of Nigerians that have been captured by different government agencies. The resolution emanated from a motion moved by Ochi Glegor Idagbo and unanimously adopted by the House. Idagbo, in his leading debate, said that all telecom service providers have all separately initiated their own biometric data gathering, which has led to duplicity of efforts due to lack of coordination force leading to the storage of the same biometric data by multiple agencies. It helps them to track crime effectively. It helps them to plan properly and it develops the economies of these developed countries. But unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, in Nigeria, this is not the case. If you go to any government agency, you need to give your information over and over and over again. Rolling on the matter, Speaker Yakubi Dogara mandated the House Committee on Population and Government Affairs to ensure implementation and report back in six weeks for further legislative action. The issue of national identity scheme in Nigeria was first conceived in 1977, but it was eventually executed almost 25 years later in view of the importance of the biometric data in planning and development of all sectors of the nation's economy. Or staying on the National Assembly, in the meantime, the House of Representatives has passed a bill seeking to amend the University of Lagos Act in second reading, sponsored by Honorable James Falake. The bill further seeks to amend Article 9 of the fourth schedule, where there is no clear specification of who shall appoint the deans of faculties, and as a result, the appointments have been left at the sole discretion of the vice chancellor of the university. In his lead debate, Falake said that the amendment is aimed at making the appointment process more democratic by reducing the overbearing influence of the vice chancellor in the appointment process. The amendment that seeks to have is on Article 9 of the first schedule, where there is no clear specification of who shall appoint the dean of the faculty. And as a result, the appointees have been left at the sole discretion of the vice of the DC. And away from the National Assembly and still talking education, the National Universities Commission has commenced the National Universities Commission has approved the commencement of Gombe State University of Science and Technology. Executive Secretary of the National Universities Commission, Abubakar Rashid, while handing over the Certificate of Recognition to the Governor of Gombe State, Ibrahim Dakombo, at the NUC headquarters, Abuja, said the decision was made after the university met the Commission's accreditation requirement. Rashid also urged the university and the state government to take advantage of the professional and technical advice of the Commission for establishment in funding of the institution. He urged relevant government agencies such as JAMP, TED Fund and the NYSC to extend the hand of fellowship to the new institution. Gombe State Governor Ibrahim Dakwambo, who received the certificate on behalf of the university, described the gesture as a new dawn that will promote government's plan to educate more Nigerians. Nigeria will function like this. I think the future 
is right. I thought she was not somebody who has a lot of these white hairs that can function this way. Accreditation of the University of Science and Technology, KUNU, Gombe State, brings the number of state universities to 46. It also serves as the 154th university in the country. This is watching the news coming to you from Galaxy Television. Still ahead when we return, a Lagos State Traffic Management.